In a little less than 10 minutes, you'll be leaving Earth. Your destination is the planet Mars. These high school students are about to become the first humans to set foot on the red planet. The Mars Explorer has touched down on the planet Mars. Well, kind of. Good. They're transforming into astronauts, complete with spacesuits, helmets, communication systems and an all-important air supply. And Mission Commander Kimberly has been kind enough to take me along on this journey of discovery. So I'm turning into an astronaut right now. <laughs> yeah. Exciting! My dream's coming true! <laughs> it's all part of space school. Yes, space school. Where students at this high school get to run their own simulated mission to Mars. So what is your mission? Um, well, we all have different roles, but I think it all comes back to sort of finding if life was on Mars and seeing if, you know, we were able to eventually have humans there, so yeah. Okay, awesome. Well, we better get this going then. Yeah. Let's do it. Helmets on. Into the airlock we go and out onto the surface. It's a copy of a crater on the red planet, complete with soil, rocks and changes in atmosphere. So when you're in there, it can start off as being really cold and you feel really light, but then it can get really muggy and the lights change, so there'll be different lights on you all the time. These intrepid explorers all have different roles, including a physicist, chemist, geologist and the all-important biologist. The role of the biologist is just to find any organisms that may have still been able to live on Mars through the mag magnetic fields and everything. They have to carry out different tasks like collecting samples, measuring radiation and testing acidity levels. We've got another green one in zone five. Okay, thanks. So site three now? Yep. Yep. Site three. They do it all with the help of mission control. My role is the mission director and I have to make sure no one dies um, uh, when the mission's going on. Yep, keeping their simulated astronauts alive is obviously key. They track their vital signs, analyse data and communicate directions. So you switch on the metal detector and the green light will light up. The mission control room is like the ears and the eyes, so they really um, need to give, have really good communication skills um, because obviously the astronauts need to be able to talk to someone that's not in the actual situation they're in so they can think things through clearly and make decisions. They also learn a lot by completing some tricky diagnostics. So the diagnostic questions um, are all different problems. They can be problem solving or they also can be involving maths or logical problems and they all apply to real life problems that you experience um, on a mission to Mars. Sometimes things go wrong on purpose. There is a lightning storm about to happen. There's some like storms or sandstorms or something that will happen that we'll have to evacuate and get everything back to the station before everything explodes. <laughs> So, mission complete. But how'd they go with that whole finding alien life thing? So unfortunately this time we didn't be able, we couldn't find any life forms, but maybe next time we'll be able to when we run it again. Either way, they say being a space school student is a really unique and inspiring experience. I think this is a great opportunity for girls to um, like see what there is in the space industry. It's so inspiring to be able to actually one day think that maybe we will be able to go to NASA and apply. So I guess the final question is, do these girls want to go to the real Mars one day? If we actually get to Mars, it will be like the best thing on planet Earth um, because we've, we've been to um, the moon and everyone was so excited. So to get to another planet, it will be a very, very awesome. I think I would, but I certainly wouldn't go on the first mission. I would want to make sure they would return. 